Hello, everyone. You're listening to Random Sage with Marianne from Revealing Light. How are you? Tarot, astrology and spirituality. I le left out some of my name. Uh, I do all these things uh, on my other channel if you want to go and check that out. But today I am uh, doing my fortnightly podcast on my Random Sage channel. This is a channel uh, for those that may be new to listening to me that uh, not only um, looks at astrology and 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 uses the tarot, but also brings some uh, of my journalistic background into things as well. So I like to uh, have a look at what's uh, happening across the world and bring in both intuition and jour journalism into that and see where that takes us because part of the skill of being a journalist is is to be a researcher and to that end I went and got a research degree as well. So um, it's good to be able to pick up uh, the sources that inform us, that don't misinform us and I'm finding increasingly that I am turning to less mainstream uh, media. So, for example, uh, the sources that I use in relation to what's going on in the Middle East may surprise uh, may surprise you. I look at Haaretz, which is um, one of Israel's major media. I look at the Jerusalem Times uh, occasionally, uh, mainly Haaretz. I, I have that coming through my email. So I'm getting daily updates. Both of those publications are very fair uh, and, and are covering, obviously, the um, what is going on in the Middle East with a very close, uh, a close in a close context. The other uh, source that I look at is Al Jahira. And, uh, of course, many will, will know that the uh, it is a Qatari publication, but it brings in journalists from all over the world and very, very good journalists. Um, unfortunately, Israel's Prime Minister and his War Cabinet have just banned Al Jahira in Israel, which is a great uh, shame because we need to see both sides of everything. Uh, I also still use Twitter, which may surprise some. Uh, but I find that many of us have stayed on Twitter. Um, I don't. I mean, its new name is X, but I will always think of it as Twitter, because it has such a variety of um, of voices. And I follow both Jew Jewish people and Arabs and Mus Muslim people, Jew uh, Arabs and um, Muslims, um, as well. So I try and get a balanced look of th look at things, as well as some. Um, pretty good um, scholars. I like to look at the uh, those that write for the Economist and the Statesman, uh, and really rigorous type of um, intellectual discourse. I, I find that keeps me up uh, out of the out of the weeds of things, and moves me away from that knee jerk populist type of reaction, which we see, which we are seeing so much of, which much of the current discourse is um is is using this kind of populist trigger knee-jerk emotional type of reaction it's very clear what is right and what is wrong <laughs> and uh and um yeah it's a very simple question isn't it okay so i want to look at uh jupiter and uranus conjunction today um I've done a lot on this particular conjunction because Uranus is that lightning quick change, the unexpected, associated with um, Aquarius energy as well, the air. Uh, and Jupiter, of course, is, is the great expander, also will bring benefits. So a lot of the surprises that we're seeing today, the unexpected, the the quite um, heartbreaking um events that we're seeing, which have come unexpectedly, um, are uh, a reflection of the kind of time that we live in. And to that end, I just want to bring up a few slides for you. For those that are listening to this podcast, I will certainly explain it, um, explain what I'm doing. The I'm looking uh, right now at the um, at the basically the arms race in the arms race and the build-up of military force. Because the other thing with Uranus and Jupiter conjunction, this is all happening 
in Taurus. And of course, Taurus is uh, the the sign we most associate, Taurus ruled by Venus, most associate with um, the earth. And to that end, I want you in the chart that I'm going to bring up shortly, I want you to notice Jupiter, Algol, the demon star, the devil star, the um, the head of Medusa, um, the portender of of um, evil and strife um, is sandwiched between Uranus and Jupiter. Uh, I want you to look at those three um, three aspects of this chart, uh, or two of planets and one is a fixed star, and also ve where Venus is in this equation. But first, I want to get to the largest armies in the world, ranked by active military personnel personnel. And it is as of, I think, January 2024. This is from statistica.com. And this is only dealing with the number of military personnel that each of these countries have. And I just want to point out that the number one ranked in terms of military personnel is China at uh, over 2 million personnel. Then we have India. So great population centers at 1.4 then we have the united states at 1.3 this is active military personnel then we have russia at uh at 1.3 followed by north korea uh ukraine is um of course is mobilized with 900,000 active military personnel pakistan iran and south korea and of course we go down the list um however China, huge military personnel force, not so much firepower. I'm talking about military personnel here, huge um, army or military that they have to draw upon. And India, of course, under Prime Minister Modi, who I predicted will take a second term. He's very much in the mould of the... He's not, perhaps not a dictator yet. There's still democratic elections there, uh, I would assume, although there's some, there's some um, talk or, or news emerging um, that there could be some, uh, some nefarious activity in relation to that uh, election. But by and large, they, India still has um, free elections. Modi, of course, has sent um, Indian, Indian assassins into Canada to assassinate sheiks, uh, sorry, um, Sikhs. So we're getting more and more outrageous type of behaviour. We know what Russia has done in Ukraine. We know that in the Middle East, Netanyahu, um, of course, uh, Israel has a very, very powerful army, army has um, not adhered to international humanitarian law in terms of proportionality. Um, the international courts have uh, already found there's a plausible unfold, plausibility of unfolding genocide there. So I do want to point out that there is this build-up, uh, and I just want to go to my second, my second uh, graph here. Um, again, I'll just share this screen. And we'll go to where it where is it here before we get to the chart and talk about uh, what might be going on astrologically. We've got um, again statistica.com, the world's biggest arm arms exporters. So who would that likely be? Uh, and this is tied in very much to um, to the build up of not only military uh, military personnel but also military force. The United States in terms of military force, military force is still ranked as uh, number one. But the United States, of course, is the uh, has the largest share of global arms exports. Um, I'm dealing with the period from 2019 to 2023. Some of that, of course, will be made up of arms to Ukraine. Uh, that, that, that's followed by France, Russia, uh, China, Germany, Italy, UK, and Spain. And I want to reiterate that some of this, um, normally uh, the United States is a is a, a big exporter of arms, but some of this share, this 41.7% in those years will be attributed 
to uh, Ukraine. Um, so the weaponry uh, that has been sent to Ukraine. Now, I do want to have a look here also at military force. I think I've got that uh, that somewhere. Uh, uh, no, I've just closed that off. So we'll take a look at the chart here. Uh, I want to say with in terms of military force, it, the graph, again, from uh, I think it was from statistica.com, uh, ranks the United States as the most powerful, can we just say powerful army in the world? Uh, Russia is up there as well. Um, China uh, and uh, Israel has quite a powerful army um, in terms of force, um, mili not military personnel so much, but military force. So really, why am I showing you all this? Because this is what we're seeing uh, across the world at this time, we're seeing uh, the rise of dictatorships in Russia. Uh, and I would argue, too, in Israel, um, with uh, Netanyahu holding on to power despite corruption charges, um, and a very, very divided Israel, we see Viktor Orban in Hungary, again, another strong man, um, and uh, and of course in China, Xi Jinping is uh, is a dictator. So we see this uh, we see this rise of these um, can be quite aggressive uh, leaders of countries that do do not that are that really have done away with democratic uh, elections and are in there for life. And that's the thing with the dictator. They're not there for one year or two year. When they come into that power, they are there for life. And it is their ultimate goal to stay and remain there for as long as they want to. In the US, we have, of course, the former President Trump, who uh, is, is have I've always seen his downfall. I mean, he is a despot, what I would call a despot. Uh, but he talks the dictator language as well. And in trying to overturn a fair election in 2020, uh, cemented himself into the crowd that uh, that don't believe in fair fair elections, anti democracy. And so, uh, on both Random Sage and Revealing Light channels, I am pro democracy, and I will cover those threats to democracy um, in the way that I do. Now. Um, so we've had uh, threats um, to the people when we get these dictatorships and these push, push, aggressive push for whether it's for power, land, territory, to establish um, their own goals. Uh, we see the civilian populations um, which are which are suffering, and we see that, of course, in Ukraine. We're seeing it in Africa as well, and we're seeing it. Um, in the hostages still still um, being um, have not been released. All hostages have not been released in the Middle East in the, uh, in Gaza. And of course, the terrible travesty that we're seeing wrought upon civilian populations. And of course, some of those bombs that Netanyahu was was dropping on highly urbanised areas were you know two thousand pound bombs. Um, and just recently, the current U.S. President Joe Biden has paused uh, delivery of more powerful, powerful bombs, which, as I said, were dropped in highly urbanized areas. Some of the hostages have been killed in this uh, in this approach. Um, and uh, I do actually want to read you something from Haaretz. Uh, I think if I can get it. Get it up fairly easily. Again, um, Haaretz is um, is is one of Israel's major um, major uh, newspaper or media, and we get here a, a statement from Amos Harel. Um, hang on, where are oh, yes? Um, no, I might need to go back. Hang on, let me go to. Yes, I still used I still use Twitter, um, and I just want to read you this quote because I think it's very um, uh, it it's very apt. This this quote is from Anne Shell Pfeffer, uh, or Pfeffer, 
and this was uh, published by Haaretz today, this morning in my email feed. Israel today is a pro prosperous state with a powerful military. Yes, it does rank up there in terms of military force. After being caught by surprise on October the 7th, it could have responded like a state with a combination of military uh, and diplomatic moves and with a coherent strategy. Instead, it has elevated Hamas, a much weaker enemy, to the level of an existential threat. It is a mindset that has not only served to empower Hamas, despite the massive losses it has taken, and even greater ones it has occurred on the people of Gaza, but to de delegitimize a, uh, a justified war in the eyes even of those in the world who support Israel. That was Anshel. Pfeffer. Pfeffer. Okay, so what could have occurred on day two of this is there could have been targeted proportional response and combined with diplomatic negotiations. Instead, the Prime Minister Netanyahu and his far-right extremist Cabinet went in and has resulted in untold, untold tragedy, the likes of which uh, is eclipsing any any kind of justification at all. Um, and so much is so much is emerging, and that's why I want to get back to Jupiter and Uranus uh, in Ukraine. Of course, uh, Russia has Russia has. Uh, redoubled its efforts to try and take Kharkiv, which is Ukraine's second largest city or second major city. And it has taken some ground away from the Ukrainian, the brave Ukrainian soldiers who are fighting for their homeland. Picture yourself and your your countrymen and women and what would have happened if you were invaded. This this is resulted uh pretty much due to delay in arms um, getting to Ukraine held up in the US Congress, but also uh, a response from the world that was not enough to the world's top ranking, certainly military personnel and also firepower army invading another country. Um and so we get, rather than a united global approach, we are more and more seeing uh, this build-up of military and aggressive energy. And it is dismaying and disappointing. So what's going on? Sorry, we'll just hang up there. What's going on in the skies? Let's have a look uh, at what might be might be occurring that can lead us to some kind of resolution that that what is happening now will lead to eventually lead to beneficial change well at this time we're seeing extremely powerful and potent conjunctions saturn and mars uranus and jupiter um we are also seeing an uptick in what are known as solar flares and i'll do some more on that on the revealing light channel uh in the past, we we have always experienced these solar flares, but right now, in 2024, they are off the chart. And of course, when those uh, occur, it has uh, it affects the electromagnetic um, electromagnetic uh, fields uh, that we all live within, and it could even lead to things like inter internet. Well, it could disrupt communications across the world. Um, this is uh, almost like in modern history, these solar flares um, in re the recent past, as far as I have looked at it, are unprecedented. So what on earth is going on here? We have multiple um, eyewitness accounts of UFOs. That, that There seems to be an un uptick there. And uh, more recently, <laughs> um, there was a very mysterious event in Miami in Florida in the US where a whole mall was shut down, shopping mall was shut down, police called and witnessed sightings of uh, of what appeared to be alien-like creatures. Now, 
creatures, alien like beings. Now, with so much potential here for uh, fabrication and misinformation, uh, it is it is difficult to say whether that actually occurred or whether it didn't. However, uh, there is footage out there if you care to look. Um, this occurred a couple of months ago now, but there are genuinely genuine eyewitness accounts of greater UFO sight, what they appear to be as UFO uh, sighting. So in terms of the astrology, uh, this conjunction, this Uranus-Jupiter conjunction, which has been um, exact, and uh, and of course it's now Uranus is at 22 degrees in Taurus, Jupiter uh, at 26 uh, degrees Taurus. And Jupiter and Algol, Algol is a fixed star that doesn't move, uh, doesn't, I think it moves one or two degrees every 70 odd years. But Algol, the devil star, the demon star, death, destruction, uh, evilness is sandwiched right in between Jupiter and Uranus, um, that conjunction. And then we have the sun in Taurus at 21 degrees. Again, the soul of flares, Jupiter expansion, Uranus, the air. What is occurring here? Um, there are many astrologers, and, and for a, a, a good rundown on solar flares, you might want to uh, visit Pam Gregory's channel. She she really talks quite in depth about these solar flares. And she posits that this is um, an energetic change for us. And of course, the sun is at the center of our solar, our universe. Uh, and of course, in astrology, it is I am. It is who we are. And we've got Venus here at 14 degrees, all in Taurus. What is Venus? Again, the Earth. And so we're experiencing Earth changes. Um, and at this time that this is occurring, we're having climate change events. It's very difficult to keep up with what is going on physically with the Earth at this time. And we have this uptick, this uprising of violence, mayhem, destruction, death in the world as well. Now, we have Venus in conjunct with the South Node. So there's an incompatibility there. The South Node is in Libra. Libra is justice. It's balancing things out. It is mediation. It is discourse and Venus, the earth. Okay, so what, what we are experiencing now in our society in having to decide which side of the ledger we are actually on and world leaders are having to decide that right now. There was a vote in the UN to recognise Palestine as a, as a state. It has observer uh, status in the UN, but 143 nations across the world, including my own nation of Australia, and I'm very, very proud of Australia, voted to rec recognise Palestine as a state, give its member status in the UN. There were nine uh, who voted against that. That will then go to the UN Security Council. It's likely that that will be vetoed there by the US. And their reasoning uh, is that if Palestine is granted um, statehood in the UN that will uh, go against Israel and Palestine negotiations about two, a two-state solution. Whether you agree with that or whether you don't, um, it was heartening to hear that 143 nations across the world want to see Pat want to recognize Palestine as a state now what that would mean is it would establish sovereign some kind of sovereignty for Palestine and of course the where those sovereign lines would be drawn and how that would occur would be open again to negotiation so um there's a lot of realities hitting us at the moment and um, to many uh it's distressing um to Others, of course, there is, and this is where I always derive hope from, there is this, uh, let me, uh, well, I should finish with this chart. There is this greater discourse that we're seeing at the moment. 
Uh, we have uh, oppositions here, a great deal of strong influences to Hygieia, which is the asteroid that we associate with health and illness in the North Node. Again, sandwiched in between the North Node and Mars, godlike, warrior-like Mars. But there's a great deal of learning uh, occurring at the moment. And uh, Neptune's not far away and Saturn in Pisces. And, of course, we are meant to use our intuition at this time and uh, and source our inform information from credible sources to uh, withdraw from that, uh, that triggering kind of clickbait, populist, mainstream media BS and dig a little bit further to get the big picture. But what the um, Neptune and Saturn is asking us to do is not to go down conspiracy theory holes, but to look at the bigger spiritual picture, to look at what, what we might be experiencing right now. And the question that I want to ask today is, are we ascending or descending? Forget sides. Forget partisan type of accusations and oh you're 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 this you're saying this because you're this no i'm saying this because this is a a well informed consideration of what might be occurring right now and i don't need to be on your side or another side um to hold this uh, to hold this view I do ask that uh, that people respect and not hurl mud and accusations and violent rhetoric at me. Those people do not exist in my realm, and if you're thinking of doing that, it won't last long. It, it, I've got very, very strict moderation on all my channels. So what is our responsibility at this time? to become as well-informed as we can. If you're consuming your media on one particular channel, have a look at 10 different channels. If you're consuming just mainstream media and listening to an echo chamber, then go and listen to a source that you wouldn't normally listen to. Stay informed. It's your responsibility to be informed, and it's your responsibility to be well thought out rather than reactive. So uh, are we ascending or descending? So at this time, I do want to say uh, also preserve your energy. Make sure that you are uh, looking after yourself. Make sure that you're having time away. Uh, from the internet, from social media. Make sure that you're doing those outside activities if you can, where weather will permit. Uh, and I understand there's been some pretty uh, horrendous cyclonic uh, tornado activity in parts of the US. And and right now we're, we're being, we've got pretty heavy rain over the weekend, but I'm still going to look for a break and I'm still going to go for a ride. And I'm still going to hope that the white cockatoos fly over my head yesterday uh, or the day before, I think it was, a swarm or a, uh, I think it's called a murder of crows, flew over my head. And so rather than the white birds, I was looking up to uh, many, many crows flying overhead um, and crows portend change. This is a time of change. We have to understand that it is accelerated change, that we're able to talk about things that maybe for the last decades have remained hidden and closed and almost like heresy if we did talk about it. There is on the upside of this a greater ability to have a discourse, a greater ability to seek out alternative views, a greater ability to, if you find those alternative views that are sound and uh, resonate with you and informed, to support them and change the way 
that the information is presented at this time across the world. All right, so I have my Shaman's Dream um, cards, uh, the Shaman's Dream Oracle. And um, also uh, thank you to... <laughs> Thank you to the uh, viewer who sent me. I in twenty twenty, I had a a cup uh, immortalizing the famous line that uh, Joe Biden um, uttered to the former President Trump in the debates: "Will you shut up, man?" And of course, uh, someone, one of my viewers, we're pro democracy across both channels. So make of that what you will. I don't always agree with what uh, the current President Biden has uh, done, particularly in relation to the Middle East, but by golly, he uh, has done far more and uh, been far more effective than uh, his opposition leader was, who actually signed, um, whose government uh, supported uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's um, uh, approach to the Qatari government to fund Hamas to the tune of $30 million a month in Gaza who ignored security warnings from his own people that an attack was present, who went in there and did what he did in Gaza. Do not always believe what you read or see. Um, your, it's your duty and your responsibility to inform yourself. Um, and, uh, okay, so um, let's have a sip <laughs> of my decaffeinated coffee. That's all I drink now. Isn't that sad? Um from my dark Brandon 2024 cup is what I wanted to say. Um, okay. Democracy does, uh, well, let's stop uh, shuffling for one minute. Does the U.S. become, remain a democracy or join the, the ranks of these dictators, strong, strong men and strong men, if I want to just put it like that, someone doesn't like that term, you know, whatever. Um who rule through brute force and uh, and undemocratic means uh, the best chance of retaining democracy in the US is to give the current president, Joe Biden, a second term. Okay, now let's move off that political... Uh, I just got a... I just got a thumb, a thumbs up. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, we'll work it out later. Let's go to uh, will the earth, um, okay, all right. What is the earth, considering solar flares, considering the planetary conjunctions, considering what's going on in the earth, considering the accelerated climate events we're seeing? Um, that bird i don't know if you can hear it i've got a lot of bird life around me i think is a plover or an egret and uh if it is the plover that i'm thinking of um they are very territorial of their nest and their homeland um okay so what is the earth and the universe trying to tell us perhaps the earth and the universe and indeed any of these alien beings are saying we have to we've come this is happening at a time uh, where uh, there's an amount of protection that is needed uh, for what is being done across the across the globe, the way that the earth is uh, being used and abused. Okay, the build-up of the military, the arms sales, the weapons that are being used, um, we are part of this earth. And so when we die en masse, and we've had the COVID, the COVID uh, years and now these war years, it's no surprise, I believe, intuitively, that we're going to be seeing continued Earth events, Earth and universal solar system um, events. All right, what is the Earth and the universe trying to tell us? So we have here the Father Gate, a bold step forward. It is, oh, I love that, the light. So this card, for those that are listening, depicts a lot of light and a gate that is opening. It is change, number 55. It's all about change. But there is light here. There is a pathway that we can take. And then we get uh, 33, uh, joyful muse and inspiration, 33. 
I want to say that the way that we can have these discourses now, the way that I can access Middle Eastern scholars, the way that I can uh, access both Arab and Jewish great minds, um, the way that the uh, Jewish people are uh, protesting in their own streets and some pretty grim Im images of police force being used on the families of hostages in Israel, the way that I can start to join those dots, the way that a secret letter signed uh, by Netanyahu and Mnuchin, Trump's finance secretary, uh, which provided Hamas with $30 million uh, a month, um, so much we can now piece together and it's resulting in 143 countries saying no to more war. Um, it's resulting in Europe um, really wanting, uh, understanding the threat that's being posed by Russia in, in Ukraine and beyond Ukrainian, Ukraine's borders. And we have the Feast of Plenty Choices and their consequences. These, this reading is telling me, that's like the Two of Swords and the Tarot, there's a, there is a, um, a, there are decisions for us to make. And you say, well, I can't influence, I can't stop war, I can't stop, I can't, bring the hostages home. I can't stop the suppression or oppression of, of the Palestinians. I can't stop the deaths, the murder, the torture, et cetera, that's, that we are seeing uh, in Gaza. And uh, so what can I do? I can't stop Russia's march on Kharkiv. Well, you can decide because that's how change happens. You can decide, as I said, to inform yourself, to stop reacting emotively and being triggered in a populist type of sense with limited information or only seeking out the information that you're comfortable with. And you can start to uh, learn. And that is the purpose of evolution and ascension is to learn, to move, to change, to learn. That is the, uh, the quest that we come into. The base of the pack is wood, wood wives and adaptability. Um, uh, that flew out of my hand. Eyes of the eagle and rising above the fray. So there's a very clear answer in these cards that in the choice is ours to ascend or descend. That is what's going on at this time. It couldn't be clearer to me. Oh, and we need to ask ourselves, are we ascending or descending? And I've said often for those who ha who do take sides, where is the compassion in your heart for those that die in war on all sides, on all sides? Do you need to hear from me how struck I was of the younger man, probably in his 30s, who was taken hostage and later killed? Do I need to talk? Do I need to say I've 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 got compassion in my heart for that hostage? Of course I have. Imagine the trauma that they've been undergoing in, within these seven months, along with the trauma and the graves that are being uncovered around the major hospitals that show potential torture which the UN and the US have now today called upon for an in, independent investigation in light that there could have been war crimes being committed in the unearthing of these bodies. Many appeared to be buried alive, bound, and include children as well as women and other other adults. Uh, this happened uh, outside in a grave un, unmasked uh, on outside Al Shifa Hospital. Those hostages could have been brought home on day two. Hamas offered or the complete return of hostages if Netanyahu would not come into Gaza. And many would say, but how would Israel defend themselves? Because the world was shocked at that time at what Hamas had done. And we have the International Criminal Court who would have gone after Hamas, who still will go after Hamas by the way, as well as Netanyahu. And uh, many of the Hamas leaders don't live in Gaza. They live Dubai, Qatar, other Arab states. And, of course, uh, the International Criminal Court could have been joined by US and other authorities, uh, and these Hamas leaders could have been brought to justice. 
it could have gone a different way. I hope it will go a different way in the future. Right, let's uh, see, are we ascending? Are we ascending? It will be interesting to see what uh, the answer is here. Are we ascending? Are we ascending? So I'm seeing uh, a bright part of the globe and, a, and, a, and part of the globe in darkness. Are we ascending? So we have here sky dancers surrender. In a way, we do have to surrender to to what is occurring at this time when we understand that this is for uh, this is as much and all as as it, as it is the world developing. Uh, it is also our spiritual uh, our spiritual enlightenment occurring as well. And there's fortune's wheel. And that is pretty much like the image I got clairvoyantly, luck and right timing. But I did see half of that round globe world, fortune's wheel, obscured in darkness. Um, but we have the light coming up on the horizon here. And then we get benefactor, grace and generosity. Really, it's in our heart. It should be in our heart to have great compassion, including for our enemies. Do I have compassion? Many of you know that I have no love for Netanyahu. Do I have compassion for him? Well, I certainly think that the death of so many children in Gaza, do I have any compassion for the Hamas leaders? Uh, all I can say about, uh, about Netanyahu and Hamas leaders and anyone who resorts to violence and killing innocent people is we have a life review and both both Netanyahu and Hamas will feel the gravity of their decision to resort to killing innocent people to death and destruction no matter what the justification is we have fallen angel spiritual narcolepsy so there will be some who remain in darkness and then some who ascend. The way to ascension is to hold compassion and love in your heart and a great deal of gratitude for being able to hold love and compassion in your heart. You're listening to Random Sage with Marianne from Revealing Light, uh, Tarot, Astrology and Spirituality. Thank you for tuning in, my friends, uh, and I'll be back again in another roughly two weeks with another podcast for you. Bye for now.